In the first units of this course, we have already learned a lot about causes and consequences of the metabolic syndrome. Overweight, or more precisely, a BMI of higher than 30 kg per square meter, is one of the criteria that indicates an increased risk of suffering from the metabolic syndrome. Globally, overweight and obesity are regarded as one of the leading health risk factors which are most likely based on excessive food intake in combination with a lack of physical activity. Furthermore, high blood pressure and diabetes type 2 are among the risk factors for suffering from the metabolic syndrome. Many overweight and obese patients suffer from the metabolic syndrome. These patients are often told to eat less to solve their problem. But is it that easy? Is it sufficient to reduce the total energy intake? You might guess that this is not only a question of reducing the consumed calories, but a modification of the dietary habits by improving the quality of the foods and by changing the macronutrient distribution. But to be able to do so, we need to increase our knowledge on various food components. We have already heard that sugars, lipids and salt are of great importance in this context and that their consumption has significant impact on the metabolic syndrome. But is it sufficient to know that sugar tastes sweet and that lipids are components of edible fats and oils? Which is the role of salt in foods besides tasting salty? In this unit, we have a closer look on the chemical composition of food. Then we will be able to answer these questions. I told you we would come back. And I am convinced that I will play the most important role now. Oh no, Ali, nobody can be more important for the metabolic syndrome than I. Oh yes, you're completely right. We will talk about you. But no worries, each of you is important and there is no need to discuss who is more important. Just come and see. Most recommendations for a healthy diet are based on the food pyramid that shows us which components should be included in our daily food. Healthy drinks such as water or unsweetened tea form the ground level of the pyramid. The second level consists of fruits and vegetables followed by grains and starches to form the basis for a healthy diet. The higher we climb on this pyramid, the lower are the amounts of the food commodities that are recommended. Ali, Azu and Asa, can you see? Your foods, those are rich in lipids, sugars and fats, are on top of the pyramid. But be careful, we should only consume them with care. However, knowing this, we should still dive a little bit deeper in the chemistry and importance of lipids, sugars and salt for a better understanding of the role for the metabolic syndrome. Before we start, let me give you one recommendation to make life a little bit easier and our dietary habits healthier. The WHO recommends to consume at least 400 grams, which is about five cyst side portions of fruits and vegetables. Following this recommendation, you will reduce your overall caloric intake, contribute to your health and reduce your risk of diseases.